just a brief outline. I'm going to go through some recent code changes and uh, just some highlights on those. Then we'll sort of break it apart and look at just flexural members, beans and lintels, non-bearing walls out of plane. Um, and then combined bending and axial forces, we'll look at a pilast and a bearing wall. And then finally, we'll look at in-plane load shear walls. We'll look at a partially grouted shear wall and especially reinforced shear wall. And in each segment, what I'm going to do is just give a brief overview of sort of the allowable stress design provisions, the strength design provisions, sort of compare them. And then we'll look at it, uh, a couple examples in which we will work with both allowable stress and strength design. Just to, uh, just to give away the conclusion, um, I will uh, try to sort of make a case, as it were, for strength design um, based on uh, seminars I've given around the country. Anecdotally, most, I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the masonry is designed using allowable stress design, with perhaps the exception of California, where, where a lot of strength design is used. Um, but I want to sort of also introduce you to strength design. Uh, in a way of comparing allowable stress design. So just as I mentioned, just a few brief code changes with the 2013 um, TMS 402 code. Um, and by the way, it used to be the MACE in 2013. It was uh, MSJC, Masonry Standards Joint Committee, with 2016 um, ACI and ASCE graciously relinquished their um, rights to the code, as it were. So the 2016 is actually just uh, TMS 402, the Masonry Society 402. So I'll use that no, uh, nomenclature here. But in the 2013 code, of course, adopted by the 2015 IBC, we did some reorganization, not like ACI 318 did. But basically, chapter one of the code had become pretty lengthy, so we actually split it into seven chapters. So we have part one, general, part two, design requirements, and some general things, some things on structural elements, reinforcement, seismic design requirements. Part three, then chapter eight, ASD, chapter nine, a, uh, strength design. Used to be chapter two was ASD, and chapter three was strength design. So if you just replace a two with an eight, and a three with a nine, you all basically have the same sections. Three major changes in going from 2011 to 2013. One is the modulus of rupture values were increased by one third for all but fully grouted masonry normal to the bed joint. Long story here that I won't go into relates back to um, recalibrating allowable stress design and doesn't really affect um, uh, reinforced masonry design other than with out of plane walls where we're calculating deflections and need the cracking moment. Uh, another big change, uh, we changed the unit strength tables, were recalibrated. So now type S mortar has a F prime M of 2000 PSI and I'll show you that in the uh, next slide. And also we introduced a uh, partially grouted shear wall factor. So we reduced the shear strength of partially grouted walls by 25% and I'll sort of try to explain that. So often we determine F prime M, the specified uh, compressive strength of the masonry, rather than by testing, which is difficult with masonry, but by this so-called unit strength method or tables. So it used to be that the minimum strength of a concrete masonry unit, C90 uh, concrete masonry unit, was 1900 PSI. Sort of a strange unit went back, um, I don't know, 30 years or so ago when actually the strength was on the gross area. 1,000 PSI on the gross area when they went to the net area, went to 1,900 PSI. Um, and then that gave an F prime M with type S mortar of 1,500 PSI. So that was sort of our standard, as it were, F prime M specified compressive strength of masonry. Based on a testing done primarily at the National Concrete Masonry Association and uh, some rather rigorous statistical analysis, um, chain, two changes. One is ASTM C90 as of, I believe it was 2014, now requires uh, the units to be 2,000 PSI. Most manufacturers are meeting that anyhow. Um, so they increased from 1,900 to 2,000. And F prime M was, is, was increased from 1,500 to 2,000 with type S uh, mortars. So that was a pretty big increase that we had there. So this table can be a little confusing, but essentially if we need an F prime M of 2,000 PSI, 
we need a 2,000 PSI unit with type S mortar, or if we're using type N mortar, we need a 2,650 PSI unit. So these columns here are the uh, strength of the unit. This is F prime M, the strength of the assembly. So I'll be using 2,000 PSI in most of my examples.